So today in the Walsh College Creator Studio, uh, I am joined with Anthony Grappito, uh, who is not only a magician, a speaker, but he has found a way to combine these two things together in a way that is making an incredible impact uh, really nationally at this point. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so, so Anthony, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and uh, tell us a little bit about what you've been up to. Yeah. Uh, my name's Anthony, <laughs> I'm 20, 28, and uh, I help produce experiences all over the country at this point, uh, either on stage as an entertainer or at some corporate events and trade shows, or as a speaker, I go to about 200 plus schools a year talking about uh, mental health and suicide prevention. Okay. So yeah. it's been quite the journey. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and and so I I did uh, a little bit of research ahead of time. So I have watched your TED Talk now a handful of times. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> you are you're not only an incredible speaker, your message is so strong, but you have a way of presenting it in a way that it connects everybody whether they feel like they can tie themselves to that message or not. Everybody in that room had to have felt like I'll do anything that this guy wants because you just have a great way of presenting it. So I, I encourage anybody that hasn't seen your TED talk to go watch it because it was a really, really strong performance uh, and it was a great message. So, so let's go, let's go back a little bit and set the stage for set the stage puns. Let's, let's set the stage a little bit for, uh, for how you got to this point in general. So what led you into being an advocate for mental health? Yeah. So, um, I got bullied so bad that I didn't move schools really okay. early on in elementary. And, um, you know, later in high school, I suffered a head injury. I hit my head. I tore both my rotator cuffs and that Damn. ripped away this really high pressure college scholarship away from me that I had worked pretty much my childhood to receive. Right. right? I, I was a wrestler and, you know, with two bum shoulders, you're no longer going to wrestle in college, which was like my plan, everything that, <laughs> I had wanted to do and had worked so hard for, uh, it was all taken away from me and I didn't know how to cope with that in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. So I chose a lot of unhealthy coping skills and I didn't have any understanding of what they were or, you know, all I knew is that I was trying to manage my symptoms and these made me feel better. But in the long run, right. all of those things had they stopped were temporary working. Fixes. So they were temporary yeah. fixes. And, um, I talk a lot about suicide and suicide prevention mm -hmm. in a way that is attainable for like middle schoolers and high schoolers. Right, right. And that can uh, be heavy topics at that young age. It, it really can be. But when, when you're talking about suicide prevention, you're don't not necessarily talking just about suicide. Like suicide prevention is promoting good coping skills for sure. and, uh, or healthy coping skills. I try to not use good and bad. A good coping skill keeps you alive. A bad coping skill does not. Right. So really adopting the healthy and unhealthy terms for coping skills is important, but trying to tell people like my, in my Ted talk that it's not the events that happen to us that make or break our success. It's, it's the way that we respond to them. I actually had that written down to bring up because I thought that was such a powerful message because it, it absolutely is. And I think that that extends even beyond the mental health game, right? I mean, it, it's, it's not always the events because the events are going to happen, whether, you know, anybody's life events are going to happen. Our response to them, though, is what is going to define not only our memory of them, but how we move forward. And mm -hmm. I think that's an incredible message for you to bring up. So I actually, that was like the one quote that I actually had on my list to talk to you about, because I do think that that's, that's incredibly powerful. So, okay, so, you, so that puts you into that space, but there's one thing to go through that space and say, okay, I'm all about, I'm all about mental health. It's a whole nother thing to go, no, 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 I'm gonna be an outspoken advocate for mental health. So how do you get to that space? Huh? How do I like, how, <laughs> I guess, what was my calling? To yeah. What, what made you want to speak to others about it? Because there's, like I said, there, so there's one thing to sit there and say, okay, I know that mental health is very important. That's great. I'm going to focus on how I can, how I can achieve mental health for myself. Right. Great. But not everybody makes that leap to go, okay, now I know how this is going to help me but now I want to go help everybody else. And, right. and these aren't even people that necessarily came to you and said, I have a problem, but you seem to manage this. Help me. You went, okay, look, I'm going to put this out to the masses so that we can hit people that maybe aren't even comfortable talking about it yet, <laughs> right, right. but I can present it in a way that I don't, you don't have yeah. to come to me. Yeah. So that started in high school. Okay. So, um, I went to Lake Orion and we lost I lost a lot of my friends and classmates to suicide okay. and it was, it was really bad. Okay. Um, and the schools, you know, they, they did what they could about it. But I remember that one of the exercises was in our homeroom, 
my entrepreneurship teacher had to like start teaching us mental health education. And I, and she, I kid you not was like, I am not going to do this. I'm not qualified or comfortable enough to do this. Right. And, um, and she was like, but if we want to have a conversation about this kind of stuff, like I'm open to having this. Right. And I was just a couple of weeks out of common ground. Okay. And uh, that's an inpatient facility in Pontiac. So I kind of explained what happened to me when I went there, mm -hmm. kind of the outpatient therapy that I was going through. And students found that very helpful. Yeah. And I was actually going to different star classes, kind of sharing magic and this story, but it was very different from what I'm doing right, today. I'm sure, very yeah. underdeveloped. <laughs> yeah. I probably shouldn't have been doing it at the time, but it, <laughs> it wasn't harmful. So yeah. that, that, that's what no. was good. But um, I was so uh, inspired by the way that people react to it that, and um, <laughs> I got in a car with my best friend at the time and we started driving to Las Vegas okay. and I started street performing this message. Okay. And then uh, it kind of turned into me starting to speak for Common Ground. They were bringing me to schools. And then the CEO at the time, Tony Rothschild said, this is what you need to do for the rest of your life. I promise <laughs> like this is helping people right. like keep developing, keep going. And, um, and I never looked back. Yeah. I, and I, you know, and there was plenty of times where, um, I wasn't educated enough or I didn't have the training or there were things that I needed to change up and I'm really good at taking constructive criticism. So keep in mind, my presentation, you know, yes, the magic came from me and maybe some magic mentors, right. but I've worked with like doctors, psychologists, like mental health, like professionals right. to develop this presentation, to make it as like purposeful as possible even the even the exact wording that I use it for each grade level is so specific and exact. I, that it's incredible that you that you even thought to go to those lengths because to have to have medical professionals to step in and help you with the actual appropriate wording on that. I mean, that's a step that you know, and I, I know you and I were kind of joking before we started. Like so many people now go, yeah, but I saw it on TikTok, so it must be true. And <laughs> oh, the, you yeah, know, we get, get you started. get so right. Or I, my <laughs> my favorite, my favorite is when they go, well, I read this article. No, you read the headline of the article. You didn't even click into it, right? Like so, you yeah. made some some assumptions. But for you to actually take the step to go, no, I'm going to go find medical professionals because this is something I want to do, and I take it very seriously. The thing I don't want to miss, though, and I and I we kind of went over it quickly, but there's a huge leap in here is you went from going from from coming out of common ground to and and getting getting bullied into being confident enough to present that information and and do magic those two things separately would be incredibly difficult to do but for you to go from from one thing to a very extreme other it sounds like maybe that teacher had a pretty big impact in there because yeah, oh yeah, and, and she was wonderful. Don't yeah. get me wrong. I, my 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 high school experience in general, like was was really great. Okay, like I, I love to describe it as like I have I have and had during that time like the best friends in the whole world. Yeah, and no matter what we were going through, we always made each other just feel included and accepted yeah. and heard. And you know we um we would just oh someone's going through something we're going to get through it together yeah. and you know sometimes it was for better sometimes it was for worse <laughs> definitely sometimes right. we missed the mark on that but yeah. you know just like any other teenager for would, sure for sure for sure um but uh yeah you yeah, know i and and uh the amount of education in like it, it has completely evolved i mean that was 12 years ago mm -hmm. and even prior to COVID, I don't think a lot of schools were open to mental health education. Right. From my experience and from the organizations that I work with today, there's been a huge shift into trying to help teenagers and middle schoolers and even elementary schoolers um, that we, we saw during COVID that there was this huge need. And even the state and the federal government have just been funding and funding and yeah. funding, trying to find yeah. more ways to help our youth because... Um, I haven't looked at the numbers this year, but to my understanding, uh, suicide rates did go down a couple percent, but the number of crisis calls has gone up, right. which I think tells us that we have more tools and resources yes. than we've ever had before, that they are effective, but it's still a broken system. For sure. So for example, let's say some, like a, a female suffers from a sexual assault mm -hmm. instance and they are now on a, a, a suicide watch or something like that. And I know this is a really, probably <laughs> this, this could be very triggering for people. Yeah. I probably should have said that before, but, um, 
you know, for, for a male to watch her, you know, 24 seven right. is probably not a very healing right. experience. It's not going to help. It doesn't mean that he's doing anything wrong no. or he's a bad person, but no. that, that's not the situation. Right. So there's a lot of little specifics that play into mental health that sure. I think as we just continue to do better and better and upgrade are, are just going to make, make this world just a, a better place yeah. and, and the process well, and the, and is the even fact easier. That, yeah. And the fact that people are trying are in that the higher, the higher level people in, in the, in the state really are trying to put money into Let's fund this. Let's figure this out, and and let's try and let's try and solve this problem before it becomes a problem. Yes. And there's a a, a great line by Peter Atia, uh, who talks a lot about about health in general, and and one of his things is, look, you can stand underneath a building and try and catch all the eggs that are coming off the building, or you can go find the guy that's throwing them and stop him from throwing them. Yes. It's like that, right? So let's let's try and stop. The, let's try and stop the mental health problems become they, before they become extreme. Yes. And let's try and fund those. And it sounds like people like you are doing that and you're trying to, let's let's give you all the tools to to help yourself before before you really need help. Yeah. And you know, there, there's, there's prevention and there's postvention. And I guess, I'll, you know, I have done a lot of postvention mm -hmm. presentations for schools, but my hopes are always to just, you know, the prevention aspect is so important to me. Right. And, you know, suicide prevention is just mental health education. Mm -hmm. It's coping skills. It's pr having social workers or mental health professionals in your school or district. And for sure. those are things that we should all be fighting for. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, all right. So now we've gone through high school. You've got, you've started to actually give some stuff. Street performance. That's a whole different level of, of guts to go and do that. and <laughs> start to present that way. I loved it. It was like, I could step out and, uh, and I was, I was like a, you know, a street performer. Yeah. Like I had like khaki shorts on to hold all the things yeah. I needed. I think I had a wagon that was moving it. Some of my, yeah. I had a, I had a friend or two that would come with me a lot of the time, but I would just street perform and all around at these different festivals and things like that. And, um, cherry festival actually was probably one of the ones that I talk about the most because they gave me my huge big starts as a magician. Nice. So I, I came and crashed their festival. Okay. And they're like, you can't be here. And I was like, but I'm going to be here, but I'm going to do it. Anyway. And they're like, all right, for sure. You can stay. <laughs> I was like, no way. Well then, um, they kept on, they only hired musicians and like, I kept joking. I'm like, wonder you're going to get like a comedy act or something like that. And you know, you're going to let me open for them. And they're like, okay, Anthony. <laughs> and then one year I got the call. They said, hey, and I didn't know who they were at the time, but they right. said, Anthony, uh, we just booked the Impractical Jokers. <laughs> and we want you to open for them. And this is a huge, I mean, yeah. Cherry Festival is this huge, oh, it's huge audience. Yeah. So Trevor City, is it, their Cherry Festival is insane. Oh, yeah. It's so, nuts. <laughs> so I was like, let's do it. And I, I put together a show and they ended up having me for them, introduced me to Darcy Lynn, the winner of America's yeah. Got Talent, open for her. Uh, most recently, Jim Gaffigan on that nice. stage. Yeah. So they gave me this huge start and, uh, you know, it was, it was really affirming because you see even like Robin Williams started mm -hmm. as a street performer yeah. until he became this huge act. So yeah. my thoughts were, if you couldn't make it on the street, if you couldn't develop your own crowd, well, your show is probably not that good. Right. So it's not going to work. Right. You know, when you sure. hire you anyway. Yeah. So well, and and you know, I touched on this at the beginning, but it, for for you, the your version of performance is is very captivating. You're very you have a lot of motion. You have and so I would imagine that your street performance version of that is very attractive to a lot of people because you because you're so animated in what you're doing and you we see you perform and you go, he believes so strongly in what he's talking about and what he's doing that of course people are attracted into it. So it is right. not surprising to me that you had an incredible run at street performance. Yeah, yeah. And don't get me wrong. Not every show was motivational. No. There were some crowds where I was like, I don't think they're going to vibe with this message. <laughs> um, but uh, a lot of them, you know, I would stop. And my straight jacket story is kind of what blew me up. Mm -hmm. the, I get wrapped in a straight jacket, 40 feet of chain, and, and I tell my personal story. And, um, you know, I probably do that 400 or so times a year. Cause I, when I go to a schools, I normally do these two back to back presentations because like some of the schools I've been to a three or 4,000 students right. in there. And I provide most, most of the time I provide my own equipment and I got 4,000 Watts. Once we hit about two K people, like I'm, I'm kind <laughs> of maxing out. You yeah. know what I mean? But, um, it, yeah, it just, uh, it, it was really, it's, it's really, how about this? It's really nice to not be on the side of the street. Anymore. I'm sure that's hundred percent for sure. I haven't street performed in many years, yeah. but I definitely felt like I put the time and I put the work in 
as opposed to there. Sometimes I, I never wanted to be in the right place at the wrong time. Right. And I, I don't ever feel like I'm in the right place at the wrong time. Anymore. Yeah. That's so. great. Well, in, in a lot of ways, you have to do the street performance to become who you are today. Yes. Is that's what, that's what helps you refine what that message is and what that looks like. So, so walk me through, um, as you got, as you got a little bit further, you started getting things like the cherry festival and you started getting things like that. What, how do you take your message and move it into the capacity that it is today? Because today you're performing a ton and it's great. You're getting hired all the time from all kinds of different worlds. Yeah. So, oh yeah. So, so walk me through, how do you get from, I'm going to be at the cherry festival. You're, you want me, you just don't know it yet to today where you are probably at a point where you almost have to turn things down because you're getting so many offers. I do. Sometimes my funnel is overloaded. Yeah. I'm actually, um, I'm afraid to go back home and open my emails because <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, here we go again. Yeah. You know what I mean? But the, the cool thing is, is that these opportunities are not like, especially with schools, it's mm -hmm. like, Hey, we will find a way to bring this presentation to you. If right. it's not on the date that you want, chances are you're still going to be at that same school in the next, you know, couple years. For so sure. we're, we're going to find a date, but, um, it, it's tough. I have two funnels. I have a, I have a magic and entertainment funnel and I really do enjoy that. Um, I, you know, entertaining people without the educational aspect is a blast to me. I do mm -hmm. a lot of trade shows. People fly me all around the country to represent their brands on stages or at Very trade cool. shows. Um, or for example, like I'll do like a, a company event for like a fortune 100 or 500 company with right. like this big arena of people and just mentalism and yeah. pickpocketing. Um, and that like kind of re me with like this energy yeah. And then I kind of take that fire and then, you know, during the school year, the organizational year, Monday right. through Friday, just like schools, 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 right. schools, and I'm, you know, flying out on weekends. And right. Things, so. For sure. All right. So you're in, so you are in these schools all the time. You're giving these performances all the time. What is this, what does that school presentation look like? Yeah. Yeah. So very different from like, if I'm producing like an entertainment experience. Mm -hmm. So when I'm at a school, I appear as a keynote speaker who uses magic. Okay. And most of the times I deliver two back-to-back -back presentations so that way they can like split the school in half. It is a 45 minute to hour and 15, depending on most, most time it's 45 minutes, but up to an hour and 15, uh, this educational session on healthy tools and resources that students have available, mm -hmm. like the real ones that they have in their community and in the school. Oh, very cool. The unhealthy ones, which is uh, my exact TED talk, like goes into next. I discuss. Uh, I kind of go through. <laughs> I hack into a student's phone, <laughs> and then we do this calculator magic trick, and their mom's phone number appears. And obviously, that's like the funniest thing in the world to, <laughs> to the school. Uh, but then we talk about the relationships that we have with technology and social media. Okay. And then at the end of the presentation, I share my story, and uh, it's very inspiring. It it kind of brings everything full circle. So it's an educational session that is super engaging with students, bring them on stage and off to just talk about mental health, resilience, and suicide prevention. Yeah. So what, what percentage within those presentations, what percentage is magic? What percentage is keynote speaker type? Yeah. So my, the magic of hope presentation uses four world-class magic tricks to deliver all of these messages. Okay. So I have an opening, I have I have an opening. I do the Ted talk, which is that magic trick and story. And then I hack into the student's phone and do another magic trick. And then at the very end to share my story, I get tied up in a straight jacket and 40 feet of chain. And when I'm talking, you can see the chain just undoing itself. It's, it's really powerful. Yeah. Like, I just ask everyone taking this deep breath and let it go. And it just, yeah. So it's, and I think what, I think when a lot of people think about magic shows, they think about like, okay, trick, 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 trick. But that's, it's not that when you no, are. No, it's not really a trick. It, no, it's, 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 it's helping. It's a, it, it is the catalyst or the visual for the stories that I'm telling. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, when, so when you say, you know, it's, it's four world class, class tricks over 45 minutes, it takes probably the duration of that 45 minutes to do all four, because it's not, those tricks aren't five seconds long. They're 15 minutes long and they're. Kind of. So, okay. So. I use the old version of, I say what I'm going to say, or sorry, I tell you what I'm going to tell you. <laughs> I tell you, and then I tell you what I just told you. Right. So I do a magic trick that sets the scene for the story I tell. I tell the story, and then we just kind of sum it up in these like one, two, three little, little bullet points, basically, yeah. that I speak out so that you hear it three different times. 
Then I do another magic trick. We're all up here. Everyone's excited and roaring. And then I have their attention for 12 minutes. So I tell another Ted talk style story. I do a magic trick. I have you up here. Ah, Everything's so exciting. And then I pull you back in and have your attention again. So it's able to go through here. Their attention span fades. And then we skyrocket back up. I bring you back down. And uh, it's a, it's a great dance back and forth with me in the audience of trying to deliver an educational message. It's incredible. How do you, because I, I, because now I've known you for a minute, but just, (laughs) you know, between that and, and then just watching through a lot of your social media channels and, and hearing stories of, you know, you, you performed here at Walsh last fall, like you, and you've done some things with, with a lot of people that we work with and everybody has these incredible things to say about you and your performance. And how do you do 400 shows in the last three months and still feel invigorated every time you do it in a way that you're not just going through the motions. I, huh, that's a tough one. (laughs) So part of, part of me, especially with the speaking, like, um, after COVID, especially like I really made this huge leap is to really lead by example, Mm -hmm. to follow my own advice. Um, I don't know if you, if you know the, uh, they're a hip hop group out of Australia called Hilltop Hoods. Okay. But one of their old songs, uh, he says, I, I give good advice, but never follow it. What's left for me. <laughs> um, I'm a hypocrite. And if I wasn't, I'd be a success story. <laughs> so <laughs> I always wanted to really lead by example. And I, and I took that to heart, mm-hmm. especially when, when COVID shut down and I didn't have the identity of a magician or a speaker or, or anything really, I was like, well, who am I? What do I want right. to do? What do I want to be? Um, I really went on a, a long journey to figure that out. So yeah. I, um, I went a little extreme. I moved to Hawaii alone. All right. <laughs> I spent spent like a month there hiking and hanging out. Yeah, and, there's worse ways um, to do it. <laughs> I know, right? But uh, I went on a lot of solo hiking trips Okay. Um, through like Colorado and the Carolinas. And I just spent a lot of time thinking and then practicing. So in the month of May... Uh, I did 54 keynote presentations in like eight different states or something ridiculous like that. Uh, So like, for example, Friday, I did four shows, four school presentations in Ohio, drove immediately to Utica um, and started performing as a close-up magician. So, um, and a lot of it has been uh, my diet and exercise and getting enough sleep, which, which I know people hear that all the time and people are like, oh, but I'm like, no, that's, that's like vital. That's not... It's not a a luxury. No. It is something you have to do. Right. And um, I've I've found that by eating a higher protein diet and staying away from carbs, I have a lot more energy. Mm-hmm. Um, well, and if you're already operating at a thousand percent all the time, you're going to have to do something for energy. So it makes sense that you would, yeah. you would prioritize that part of your health. Yeah. So that's that's a big that's a big part to me is is sleep, diet, and exercise. And um, I kid you not, even sauna use has really changed. Um, a lot for me. So yeah. I, I don't feel like as like loaded and, and burnt out from like life, but yeah. I, a lot of it is just kind of, um, <laughs> it kind of sounds weird, but I, I force myself to smile a lot. Yeah. So if I wake up and I'm like, man, I'm tired or I don't want to do this. I will put the biggest smile on my face the entire way to my gig. I will like force it to happen. And I'm just, I'm really hoping that the the people, when I get there are just in a good mood yeah. and just ready to work and go. And that's yeah. what I see all the time. Right. Um, I give myself a lot of credit for the work I do, but I also give, like when I go to these schools, I, I can't imagine what principals and superintendents and even teachers, especially teachers, mm. they deal with so much. Uh, of them. Teachers are not just teachers anymore. No, they're not, not just educators. Close. They not are, they are metal. They're, they're not sure. Tra- not all of them are trained, but right. you know, they're kind of looked at as like the counselor yeah. and or the person that everyone wants to talk to. Absolutely. And sometimes they're a policeman, sometimes yep. they're this. And yeah. I, I give them so much credit. Oh, for sure. You know, yeah. I do a school assembly and leave. I just couldn't imagine. No, back no, to back we, to back I, to back. I hosted a birthday party for my seven-year-old and immediately <laughs> called her teacher. And I was like, I am so sorry that you're underpaid. <laughs> <laughs> just either you are, you Take need the kids so, back. Yeah, you deserve so much more. <laughs> it is. And, and, you know, and, and to your point and, and to bring it back into the mental health space, like this is where the resources need to be is let's yes. put it into a space where where we can we can attach to attach the mental health aspect to a spot where the kids already feel comfortable 
we're not trying to earn the trust of them in, in any other way. They have enough going on. They don't need more, right? But if we can attach the mental health resources into an, a place like school where they already have a comfort level by bringing people like you in where you can not only deliver a message, but deliver it in a way that is going to resonate with them. Yes. It's incredibly powerful. Yeah. You know, there are a lot of speakers and I hear this all the time. They're like, Anthony, we have we have never seen a presentation like this. And I say this in my talk. I said, the reason I created this is because when I was in school, we would get a presenter who'd show up with a PowerPoint, mm -hmm. present on data and statistics. Right. So let's say we spent an hour talking to high schoolers and middle schoolers, and they learned things like one out of four people struggle with mental health. Right. Or the second leading cause of death for their age group is suicide. There's nothing they can use with that information. No, they can't do anything It's not that. practical. No. It's not... It, there's no relevance. No, you just gave him anxiety. But just, probably, <laughs> probably. To be honest, it would have, yeah. you know, I'd be like, oh, these are my statistics. Right. Like, that means I'm part of this. Exactly. The second most likely way I'm mm -hmm. to die is, yeah. so that kind of stuff, it, it isn't helpful. But giving real, a real talk on the healthy tools and resources and affirming that you can trust and use them. Right. But having an honest conversation with my, which my TED talk does about the unhealthy tools and resources, right. you know, that scare tactic that we try to do with kids, it, it's never worked. No, it's never going to work. No. Um, so giving them a real reason behind it and uh, actually explaining how, you know, humans do use unhealthy coping skills for sure to try to deal with thoughts and symptoms for sure. Um, that's why I, I, don't, I don't call them good or bad because while, you know, if, for example, uh, you see this, we all have friends that, okay, it's Friday. I'm going to crack open a cold one. Right. Um, I'm not going to call that a bad coping skill. No. If that's what gets you through the week, then right. I'm happy for you. Right. And to have an honest conversation though, about how that could destroy future relationships and how relying on that could be, it right. is unhealthy because right. we know it is, um, is super important, especially in high school or middle school where, you know, I, I know plenty of people who are like, man, I, I wish it didn't have to be this way. I wish I could go back and train my mind, body, and spirit right. in a different way. And yeah. they still could. Yeah. Um, but uh, just giving them like an actual chance and For an sure. actual conversation. For sure. Yeah. And, and it's it's wonderful, again, that, that somebody like you can go in. And I, I would imagine that the, that the teachers and counselors are like, yeah, I, I've, I've never seen a presentation like this before. But that's the point, right? Because you can't go in with the same the same approach to everything. Well, and that's how magic helps because we have all these biases and these agreements mm -hmm. that we have formed since childhood. Right. And magic takes down the bias and agreement by creating wonder, evoking wonder and awe. Right. So they experience this trick that destroys any agreement they have about physics exactly. or this or this. And they're like, wait a minute, if that can work, maybe I should be a little more curious. And that's what I find that that's the magic creates more that. curiosity. I love that. Uh, and that was the original intent of a magician. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of magicians who have wonderful shows. And at the end of the show, you didn't take anything away other than he was good at magic. Right. The original purpose for a magician was actually to try to connect us with some kind of higher power. Right. And so we saw this in medicine men and shaman when we were like tribal people. Right. So, and uh, actually I could, uh, after working with the Saginaw Chippewa tribe and most recently they had to fly me to Oklahoma because the Wyandotte tribe that started, I think in Canada and kind of came their way through Michigan is now all the way in Oklahoma. Okay. Um, but they were explaining to me that that Michigan itself had like se seven Native American languages. So mm -hmm. Michigan, like our state, yeah. had seven languages that that were. It's just stuff like that blew my mind. Yeah. Like, as as I get, that's a cool thing. I get to learn yeah. while I'm doing. So I don't just go to a school and leave. I really enjoy talking to people For and sure. learning about the culture because when I was in North Dakota their culture is extremely different oh, than yes. what I'm finding in Michigan, but right. central Michigan's culture and Metro Detroit's culture are completely different. They're very different things. Um, Pennsylvania, yep. Chicago, yeah. Oklahoma, every, right. we're just so unique. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And that's what, that is the part that makes it fun about your message is that you can present it in a way that does make sense to all of those groups. Yes. And, and again, bringing it back into the mental health space, it is important for everybody to be part of mental health awareness and mental health in general. So if you can create a message that speaks to all of them, then it's an incredibly powerful thing for you to use going yeah. forward. Oh yeah. No, awareness of this, uh, of tools and resources, but also an actual action exactly. plan, which exactly. is so important. Yeah. So let, okay. So, so that's what you're up to today. What does the future look like? What's, what is Anthony doing in a few years? Oh man. I don't know. You know, okay. So, um, 
like I didn't think I'd make it this far. <laughs> so every, <laughs> everything else is like the icing on yeah. the cake. You yeah. know what I mean? I would love to just continue through schools. Okay. Um, I am open to corporations. Like I've done a, like, um, like the Allstate Insurance Company had me do a presentation for them. This was virtual actually, okay. but they have a healthcare plan for like their employees mm -hmm. that they could get three free, or I forget, it's been a year. So I had this memorized, right. but they can get a certain number of, of free therapy sessions for okay. them and their household, people in the household. Okay. And um, I would love to just see more larger companies providing mental yeah. health education uh, for, for their for their staff and employees, I think that actually will make or break a lot of these companies' success moving forward in the yeah, future. For sure. Um, so if you can be an advocate on the on the distribution of health services and be an advocate for these companies, that's a great way to go. If a company doesn't realize that where everyone is spending a majority of their amount of time has an impact on their mental health, right? Like, I. How They've could already you, missed. <laughs> I, this may offend some people. But I, how could you call yourself a leader? Right. I mean, golly, for sure. You, you are you are directly you are creating this community, right? And your community, in my opinion, should be full of safety, acceptance, and support. That doesn't mean you shouldn't be driving people to work hard. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't be you know pushing people to be the best self right. or or that you're going to go through challenges. Right. But instead of reacting to situations, right. you could just be creating so many beautiful things. Right. So. right. Well, and understanding that hundred percent every single day is going to wear you thin. You got to operate on a way that, that allows for people to operate at their, at their pace and get things, get things done for you. And if you can create a space where people are happy to be, they are very happy to do things for you. Oh yeah. And, and I think, I think anyone who says I'm hundred percent, cause I'm, I'm, don't get me wrong. I give my all every day. That mm -hmm. doesn't mean I'm going hundred percent every right. day. Like that's just an illusion. Yes. I, and I think so many times we mistake confidence. So, okay. So going back towards, I guess the, the suicide discussion, if that's right. okay. Um, a lot of times I hear, you know, this person was a star athlete, a straight A student had all the friends like, and now they're gone. We just don't get it. Well, sometimes that confidence can be an illusion right. of, of suicidal ideation. And what I mean by that is, some people have just been remained strong or resilient for so long that they're like, is this how like every day is do I have to do this forever challenge? Mm -hmm. Like I'm done. Um, and other times it's, well, if this doesn't work, I can take this route out. Right. And that can create a false sense of confidence. Right. And that actually is a warning sign that I think a lot, uh, a lot more professionals are aware of now because that's where I was. It, at a early point after high school, I was like, well, all my plans are destroyed. So I'm going to try this. And if it doesn't work. Right. And that's why I, I don't, I don't use the derivatives like suicide is, is never the answer. Well, if it wasn't, I wouldn't have to do what I have to do every right. single day. Right. So. Right. It's a, it's a wonderful thing that you were able to, to take those early experiences that you've had that guided you into a, into a spot that I'm sure was difficult but coming out on the other side and using the tools that you learned through that time to, to not only get yourself into a strong mental state, but then be able to help others get into a strong mental position. Yeah. And I think that it's, it, it, speaks, it speaks worlds to your perseverance personally, and then also what you believe in, in our students for the future. I mean, you, you have to have such a strong desire for middle school, high school students to succeed in life in order for you to make that the profession level that you have. Yeah. So on the, on, in, I'm going to speak on behalf of, of so many other people <laughs> and just say thank you because it is something that is, that is a very difficult thing. And it's also something that many, 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 many people are not qualified to do or comfortable doing. They can't do those, those conversations. They know that they need to happen but they don't know how to do it. So I, on behalf of so many other people, I tell you that I appreciate so much Thank you. That, that you've taken that approach to, to life. And I think that what you're doing is incredible. I look forward to everything that you have coming forward. I love when you have new things that come out. Your social media channels appreciate crack it. me up. Thank you. Yeah, the, <laughs> that's, I never thought I'd become the most viral pickpocket in the world. Right? But Well, here, really quick before you get away from that. <laughs> <laughs> I, what is your Instagram that people can find you? Because that is, because it's, it's so just fast. at Anthony Grappito, my name. So okay. Anthony 
G R U P I D O. Okay. My TikTok, my Instagram, and I have an official like Facebook page. Yeah. That, and you that became the the number one viewed pickpocket on on a lot of channels, but Instagram probably TikTok because it kind of blew up everywhere. And yeah, I don't. I I stop. I hit over 200 million views and I was like, I don't need to count anymore. Like I'm <laughs> yeah, done. We're, I'm we're done, done keeping we're score. Done. But it was, it was so impressive. And my favorite was you put out these compilations of, of quick videos of, did you just see a magic trick? Would you like your watch back? And it cracks <laughs> me up every time, but it became, it became such a thing that, that it became part of the zeitgeist. Like everybody was like, ah, I know, I know this one. I've seen that video, whether they attached it to you or not, that as soon as you mentioned that, they'd go, yeah, I know. I that didn't want to be in any of my videos. I wanted I know, to it's show just your case, hands, which I, cracks me up. <laughs> I wanted to showcase just the human experience of just wonder, awe, and like laughter. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't want to be anything. And I, I actually had some of my friends who were like, have you seen this guy? I'm like, bro, <laughs> Look at the name. <laughs> oh man, I didn't know that was you. I'm like, what the? Like you didn't recognize my voice? Yeah. Like, come on, bro. But the, um, but the genuine <laughs> joy, be, and I love that you turn the camera on them. This isn't about you. This no. is about them. And the genuine joy. Magic is not about the magician. No, it is not. It is. The, you, okay. I have a, I have a wonderful show and it is a great show. And every once in a blue moon, I run into an audience that didn't want to see magic. All of a sudden it's not a good show. Yeah. <laughs> so like, you know right. what I mean? Yeah. But I think that goes for anything. Yeah. Um, if I were to go to, I so, hmm, like certain people, like they're EDM bangers, right? Right. Like in these music festivals, you have like right. excision with 2 million watts of bass, <laughs> but like a guy who's going to like faster horses and is like hates EDM, right. that's good. He's going to be like, that was the worst show I've ever seen. <laughs> so it's about, like I said, being right. in the right place at the right time, which is why you have to, I don't really get leads that don't apply to me anymore, but I think that's where a lot of artists, uh, mm -hmm. entrepreneurs, they, they miss is they take, they're, they're so worried about like their lack of leads that they take whatever they can get right. instead of being like, actually, no, but here's another person I think yeah. would fit this. Yep. That person ends up respecting you more and finding you the right room to be yep. in in the future when yeah. they recommend you. Well, and, I, and I, that is something that we can we can touch on really quick because I do find that really fascinating. In the performance world, it does seem like entertainers are against each other for whatever reason. Like, it, But in the meantime, you could go into a room and be like, look, there's four of us in this room that do this and we're we're probably the only four in the country that know what it's like to go through this process. Okay. So here's the thing. All of the artists that are not succeeding are right. warring with each other. Yes. All of the people <laughs> who are like doing awesome, like <clears throat> we text, we call, <laughs> we hang out. I haven't, uh, like I will sit down and have dinner. Like I genuinely love hanging out with other magicians. I have so many magician friends, actually, uh, my mentor, Andrew Bennett. Okay. So this is a really, this is a really important, um, he was Ross Perot's like one of his ex like top men, I'll okay. call it. So he, um, I think he was 25 or something. Yeah. Sorry if I get this wrong. If you're watching this interview. <laughs> he was about this age and moved to Australia and grew an account like over 60 million, but he had used magic in all of his business demonstrations. Yeah. He ended up forming this group called magic on purpose, which was only for magicians who are using magic for a deeper purpose. That's so cool. I was like the mental health one. We have a leadership one. We have a, we, this one guy from uh, France talks about like organizational uh, leadership and things, but like he like is consciousness. Like, like okay. I don't know how to explain it <laughs> other than like, he like just speaks like the universe's truth. Like he says something and you're just like, that resonates so deeply <laughs> with me. But I have met so many amazing, amazing people. For sure. You know, not only just magic, but even music artists and things like that. Um, you, you, <laughs> I would have called you a liar. Like one, uh, if someone ever would have told me that one day I would go hang out with Dan and Shay after their concert <laughs> and like just genuinely just go hang out with them. Right. And like just right. have a blast. But, yeah. but again, they, they said the same thing where um, it was Shay, I think, who said, I was like, so we you know what was life like before this? He was like, I lived at Diddy's house, yeah, producing rap. I'm like, what? Yeah, 
What do you it's, mean you lived yeah, in? Yeah. Like, it's crazy. You're a country artist. Yeah. He was like, oh, well, I'm, yeah. I am now. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, and that's what? the thing. Is, you know, you find your, you find your thing, you find your people, you find your, your, your whole niche and you go, go for it. Yes. And you know, and I think that's, that's one thing as we, as we wrap up here, one of the yeah. things I do want to call out is I, I do think it's incredibly fascinating for you. And I think one of the levels one of the reasons that you've become incredibly successful beyond the fact that you're an incredible, incredible performer, you speak to something that is so powerful, but you have found a very, very specific niche to go in and speak mental health and combine that with magic in a way that resonates with age groups from children on up is such lots of adults. Do. Yeah. Right. Like, and that's the thing that's so, it's so powerful and, and magic has a way of for whatever reason, people that are people that are trying to sound cool, they're like, oh yeah, magic, whatever. But if you show them a magic trick, they lose their mind. And people love magic. They genuinely feel because it, they feel like a kid again. Yes. And in so many ways, exactly what you said, they have a belief in something in physics that this has to be true. And when you show them that it doesn't have to be true, suddenly their mind has opened up to something so much greater. So the yes. fact that you have filled that space now by saying. Go ahead. I, I think this applies directly to what you're saying. Um, I really enjoy the works of Dr. Joe Dispenza. Okay. And I think one of his quotes uh, that he says is, we define reality with our senses, and that is one of our greatest illusions. Magic is a prime way to show someone that they can feel something they can they can hold something in their hands and it it is so true. They're holding a deck of cards and it is gone. Yeah. And that just opens you up to a world full of possibility. And uh, I guess continuing on stuff that he would, that I've read or have heard him say, or that I truly believe in too, is that the universe only gives us what we believe we deserve. Mm -hmm. And if you can believe that anything can happen and that, and, and that we are, I, I think all inherently good. So I, I believe that, that yes. every single person is inherently good. And yep. I've spoken at juvenile detention centers. I, I've met kids that have, you know, they have murder charges or international drug smuggling, you know, charges. And, you know, you walk in with this bias of like the, they have to be evil, but they're kids. They're kids. They're just kids. And and when you hear their story, you're going to find out a lot more and about the human experience than, than you ever could have imagined. Yeah, so you sure. just to give up, you can't give up on, on our youth. They're yeah. just, they're the future. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and we appreciate so much that you've taken that into your profession and you've taken on such a serious role in, in making sure that they become those, those mentally healthy, successful people. Yes. So, so thank you. So, uh, as we wrap up, what are some ways that people can find you so that they can book you for events? They can check out your stuff on social. Yeah, of course. Um, so what are some ways people can find you? So I spent a lot of time, uh, <laughs> developing my website. So please go to it at www.themagicofhope.com. You can check me out on pretty much any platform, uh, Instagram, uh, TikTok, uh, Facebook. I should do a better job with YouTube, but I got lo a lot of better. <laughs> I got a lot of videos there. But um, yeah, I mean, you, you type in Anthony Grupito, you're you're gonna find me. Perfect. Perfect. Well, Anthony, I appreciate so much you yeah, spending no, time I, with I us. I appreciate you yeah, guys having me. Absolutely. Well, I don't know if uh, if anyone's still listening out there, <laughs> uh, but Walsh has this really epic. Uh, what is it called? The creator, the creator lab. lab. Yeah. This really epic creator lab. So, uh, definitely, definitely a really unique asset for, for a college to, yeah, to have. For sure. That's incredible. It's very fun. It, we love getting students in here and letting them really release their creativity. Yes. Thank it's you so, so much. So thank you, Anthony. This was great. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. 